When ASRock launches a new Tai Chi motherboard, it's usually about making a statement. They pack a huge number of features into a single board, aiming for that top tier enthusiast grade performance that rivals anything else on the market. With the Z890 Tai Chi Lite, ASRock is trying something a little different. They're taking that high-end Tai Chi philosophy and kind of streamlining it, offering a board that still has a powerful feature set, but for a more accessible price point. Now, the Z890 chipset itself is Intel's latest high-end foundation for the latest Core Ultra series processors. So we're talking about a platform that's built for maximum performance. But with this light version, ASRock has focused on delivering the core essentials of a premium board without the unnecessary frills. This includes a robust power delivery system, support for lightning fast DDR5 memory, and an impressive six M.2 slots for all your storage needs. They're kind of positioning the Z890 Tai Chi Lite as a board that delivers, I guess, a no compromise experience where it matters most, performance, cooling, and connectivity, all while ditching some of the more, let's say, elaborate, uh, kind of aesthetic elements to keep the all important cost down. With this, ASRock claims to have crafted the motherboard that isn't just about raw specs. It's about a focus on substance over style, as they've said in the past. More importantly, there's a big emphasis on its high-end components, from a server-grade PCB to a powerful VRM design with 110 amp power stages. And they've also included a comprehensive set of connectivity options, including dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, Wi-Fi 7, and dual LAN ports, designed to meet the needs of the most demanding users. And all essentially for a price point that should be in reach for more gamers and creators than a full fat flagship. So I guess the big question for us is, how well does the Z890 Tai Chi Lite live up to these claims? Does it truly hit that sweet spot of performance and features that ASRock is aiming for with this light approach to their top tier lineup? And can it deliver the premium Z890 experience without venturing into the ultra high end pricing territory of its bigger brother? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. All right, to stay calm, you've got one job. Do not let this thing overheat. It's running hot. I don't know if it's safe. Get the Wireview Pro. The Wireview Pro safeguards your graphics card with real-time power and temperature monitoring, acoustic alarms for custom thresholds, and sensor pin detection to ensure proper 12VH PWR connection. External sensors can monitor additional components like memory or voltage regulators, while an OLED display provides instant insights, meaning that this is the last time you'll blow a 12VH PWR connector, soldier. To keep your system protected, click the link in the description below. So kicking things off with the unboxing, the packaging itself is typical ASRock with a simple but elegant design on the front with a simple logo and model name, along with some of the key features like Thunderbolt and Wi-Fi 7, as mentioned before. Flipping things around and we're greeted with a lot more information, including our first glimpse of the board itself, that powerful power delivery system, the plethora of M.2 slots, and much more, along with a full view of the rear I.O. and a spec table, making it easy to see if this board is right for you if looking at it in a retail store. Now inside the box, you'll find, I guess what you class as a reasonably packed set of accessories, which include Wi-Fi antennas for the integrated Wi-Fi 7, four SATA cables of which two are right angled, a quick installation guide, other various paperwork, two M.2 standoffs and two M.2 screws, an ASRock branded keycap, three thermistor cables, and an ARGB splitter cable. So I think it's safe to say that everything you'd need to get up and running without a huge amount of other non-essentials. Sure, the keycap isn't a necessity, but that's only going to cost, I guess, pennies to produce and is actually at least a functional accessory. So moving on to the main course, the motherboard, and well, I'm liking it. With the black PCB and the black and silver accents on the heat sinks, it looks extremely premium. And from the get-go, you can see that ASRock have squeezed a lot into the ATX form factor, something that other brands have tried to do, but have ended up pushing into kind of E-ATX territory, which again, all adds cost, which is something ASRock were keen to focus on with this light moniker of board. Even though this is for the price conscious coming in at $399, we still have an eight layer two ounce copper PCB. And there's a good amount of metal in places to add to the board's rigidity and styling. But more importantly, to keep things cool and under control. 
Flipping things over, we do find a bare PCB on the rear, which again helps to keep costs down, but also is unlikely to assist in cooling as while this board is high end, it's not at the more extreme levels where a backplate is needed to help cool components. While this board has a lot of features, it doesn't look sort of overly busy, as the space has been utilised very well, and there's the smallest amount of RGB on the board's M.2 cover, which just gives it that extra level of design flair, along with that synonymous gear cog style design on the chipset heatsink, M.2 heatsink and rear I.O. cover. This RGB can of course be controlled through the polychrome software or can just be completely turned off if you're not into light shows. But of course, that's all kind of coming down to personal preference and well, down to the individual user. RGB lighting to one side, though the board does look simple in some aspects, I really like the theme and just overall how clean it looks. At first glance, it's hard to believe that this board can take six M.2 drives, and well, that shows that they've really thought about the placement of components on this board to again offer substance over style. But that's not to say that they've completely forgotten about the style part, as I think anyone looking at a board like this wouldn't really be disappointed when it comes to the design department. Now, in terms of features, we get just two X16 PCI Express slots, of which both operate at X16 speeds, though the top reinforced slot utilizes PCIe Gen 5 bandwidth, while the secondary slot operates at Gen 4 speeds. Now, talking of Gen 5, we also have a single Gen 5 M.2 connector under the singular M.2 heatsink, which is also toolless for easy installation, along with five more M.2 slots, of which four operate at Gen 4x4 speeds and the other at Gen 3 speeds. And it is worth noting that if the secondary PCI Express slot is in use, then the fourth M.2 slot will be disabled as it does share the bandwidth. Now, all M.2 slots also include latch systems for installing your drives, again, making installation and removal easy with no need for any tools. Now, there's also four SATA ports too for those using older style drives. And this is something ASRock are kind of, well, they've always been good at, while other similar boards may only have a maximum of two SATA ports instead. Now, when it comes to connectors, there's, well, it's pretty plentiful with ARGB and RGB headers scattered around the board, a ton of fan headers of which multiple can power devices like pumps up to three amps and have smart fan speed control. There's also USB 2.0 legacy headers at the bottom, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header on the right, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C header as well. Towards the bottom, we also find a total of three Thermistor cable headers, of which the cables come included, which is nice to see, along with some nifty features for overclocking and troubleshooting. It's in the top right where we find a debug LED, along with power and reset buttons, something that we'd, I guess, typically see on a high-end board of this nature, and is of course a welcomed addition. The rear I.O. has a lot of connectivity too, along with a small area that incorporates some ventilation, which should allow for a small amount of cross breeze from your system's fans to help keep things nice and cool. We also find USB ports ranging from legacy USB 2.0 speeds to USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2 Type-A ports, and those all important Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports, giving us up to 40 gigabit per second bandwidth for the fastest possible speeds. There's also two RJ45 connectors, of which one operates at 2.5G speeds, while the other bumps it up to 5G, along with the all-important Wi-Fi 7 connectors, a single HDMI port, audio including SPDIF optical out, and a clear CMOS and BIOS flashback button. Again, some handy features when overclocking or troubleshooting issues that you may encounter. Now, in terms of power delivery, Z890 base boards are no stranger to having pretty beefed up designs, and the Tai Chi light is no different, with a 20 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 phase setup with 20 110 amp Dr. Moss smart power stages for the V-Core and utilize 20k black capacitors, something that ASRock kind of pride themselves on using on these boards, especially on the higher end segment of the market. Now, the exact model of phases used for the V-Core are Renesis R2209004 MOSFETs and are all being run by the Renesis RAA229130 PWM controller. And this is something, again, that we've seen ASRock use on other boards in their product catalogue and found them to be well, sufficient. This power delivery design is all being fed from the two 8-pin EPS power connectors in the typical top left of the board, of which ASRock claim are high density, meaning that they can withstand higher currents compared to traditional power connectors, therefore providing more stable delivery. Now to keep things under control, the stylish heat sinks made from aluminium aren't the biggest that we've seen on a board, but should be sufficient even if running with a top tier U9 CPU and pushing modest overclocks. The heat sinks are easily removed and turning them around lets us see the thermal pads used to keep the power delivery phases cool. 
Now, when it comes to the BIOS, it's not changed a whole lot over the years and is still somewhat lacking to what the competition brings to the table from the likes of ASUS and MSI, but still has all of the core functionality that you could ever need. As expected, there's an easy mode and an advanced mode and things are labeled well. And for most users, going into easy mode and simply setting your XMP profile will be enough. There's also the fantastic tuning area, silly name I know, but yeah, they've gone with it, where you can set fan curves or simply choose a profile with silent, standard, performance or full speed modes. What would be nice to see is, I guess, an area for viewing a full diagram of the board with connected components and devices like we see on other manufactured boards. But I guess I'd expect to see that as a complete overhaul when ASRock update their BIOS on the next generation of boards. In terms of the software, that's another area that is looking, well, quite dated. It essentially looks like a mimic of the BIOS, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But again, compared to rivals, there's not a huge amount to talk about as it's, well, quite simple overall. What's also frustrating is that a separate piece of software is needed for controlling the RGB. And while this is simple and everything is on a single page, I don't mind this, but I guess I would have preferred to see it as part of a single piece of software without the need for installing two separate suites. So it's clear to see that this board has a lot of good features while still prioritizing that aggressive price point compared to the competition. But of course, we have to see how it stacks up in terms of performance. It's here where we chucked it onto our motherboard test bench with an Intel Core Ultra 9 285K with 48 gig of Kingston Fury Renegade 8200MHz CL40 memory and an NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition. All testing was done inside an NZXT H7 Flow case with the side panels installed to simulate those all important real world conditions. We used K-Type probes for VRM testing and placed them on the two phases closest to the main controller. And we also used the latest BIOS version and the latest version of Windows for all of our testing too. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting with PC Mark to see how the Tai Chi Lite stacks up compared to the competition and straight away it's not off to the best start with a score of 9,207 points, which does put it 10% behind their next best result, though it does come in 2% better than the worst performing board, which is the MSI MEG Z890 Ace. Moving over to Cinebench, things are looking much better with a single core score that comes within margin of error of all other boards tested, and matches both the Tomahawk Wi-Fi from MSI and Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 from Gigabyte. The multi-core score is also on the strong side, falling just a few points behind the Z890 Maximus Hero from ASUS. In ADA64, the results are on the stronger side of the scale in terms of the read and copy speeds, while the right bandwidth test does show the performance faltering slightly, though nothing that would be, I guess, for any cause of concern. The better result comes by the way of the latency, though, which comes in with the lowest score we've seen from all of the boards tested. Switching over to Super Pi, and again, the Tai Chi Lite is on the better end of the scale at 340 seconds, which is the second best result that we've seen, and rivals some more expensive boards like, again, the Z890 Maximus Hero from ASUS. In Y Cruncher, the Tai Chi Lite lines up perfectly with other Z890 boards that we tested with a score of 165.193 seconds in single core and 17.891 seconds in the multi-score. As we look at gaming performance in Spider-Man Remastered, the Tai Chi Lite sits middle of the road at 211 FPS in the averages and 153 frames per second in the 1% lows. This puts it comparative to other boards tested, though at such a high frame rate you'd never notice a difference between the best and worst performing boards in our chart. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we have performance that again sits slap bang in the middle of our chart at 253 FPS, though the 1% lows did sit a bit lower than the competition to the tune of around 6% when compared to the best result, though this does only put it 2 FPS behind the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. Then in the Rift Breaker, as you probably have guessed, the Tai Chi Lite sits in the middle again with a comparative result to the Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 board, which also puts it 8% faster than the MSI MEG Z890 Ace and with stronger 1% low figures as well. Though in this case, the Maximus Hero from ASUS comes in with the best performance here. When looking at SSD temperatures, it's pretty easy to see the correlation between the slots as slot 1 operates at Gen 5 speeds and so you'd expect it to run a little bit hotter, coming in at 84 degrees, while slots 2, 3 and 4 are all covered by heat sinks and operate at Gen 4 speeds and therefore come in identically at a respectable 52 degrees. Beyond that, slots 5 and 6 have no cooling of any kind and are therefore allowed to rise in temperatures to 72 and 78 degrees respectively. 
When it comes to boot time, the Tai Chi Lite is on the slower side, coming in at 45 seconds, but this is something I've come to expect from ASRock over the years, and is still comparable to boards from both Gigabyte and MSI. And some BIOS settings can actually help to shave that time to a more acceptable level if you want it, though we test using optimized defaults to give, I guess, a, a level playing field. Power consumption wise, at idle, the Tai Chi Lite comes in as the most power efficient board that we've tested at just 85 watts, whereas with a simulated Cinebench load, we see that rise to 351 watts, which puts it into the mix and sees it as the second best board we've tested in terms of raw power usage. While during Prime 95, this rises even further, now at 381 watts. Moving over to what is arguably the most important point of motherboard testing, and of course we're talking about VRM temperatures. It's here at idle that things are looking good, with both probes sitting at 32 degrees, which is slightly below other boards tested. When we put loads through the board, temperatures rose as you'd expect, but still stay within comfortable levels in the low to mid 40 degrees on both probes, while the sensor, which is measured in software, shows much higher temperatures, though still at very reasonable levels. This shows that the heat sinks along with that active fan solution are doing their job at keeping the phases under control and is well very comparable to other Z890 based boards that we've tested. So after thoroughly looking at the Z890 Tai Chi Lite, it's clear that this motherboard sticks to that design philosophy of substance over style. It manages to keep the ethos of high-end performance and robust features of the top tier Tai Chi series, but it puts it into a more accessible package, showing that a premium experience doesn't have to come with a premium price tag. ASRock has a winner on its hands here with the board's overall design, I'll give it that. The no frills style with its clean black and silver components just gives it a somewhat refined and professional look that will appeal to builders who prioritize function. The attention to detail from the server grade PCB to the metal heat sinks gives this board a durability and high quality feeling. It's kind of efficient use of space is also particularly noteworthy. Packing in my opinion, a massive number of features within the standard ATX footprint without feeling too cluttered. Now, when it comes to the features, the Z890 Tai Chi Lite is nothing short of impressive. It's built on a foundation of, I guess, a pretty extreme VRM setup with those 110 amp power stages, meaning that it can easily handle the most demanding processors and provides a solid platform for overclocking. Then there's the board storage, which I guess is a particular highlight for me with a staggering six M.2 slots, including that all important PCIe Gen 5 slot of which for most users, the heat sinks will cater for. Though if using six drives, you may wanna make sure the cooling in your case is doing a good enough job to avoid, well, throttling. For connectivity, dual Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 7, and a pair of LAN ports also helps to make this a truly modern and I guess you class as a future-proof platform. And again, for a reasonable price. Now, when it comes to the performance, the Tai Chi Lite proved to be a strong contender. It delivered consistently solid results, often placing it among the top performers in our suite of benchmarks. While some results showed it, I guess, just shy of the absolute best, the overall picture did rival some more expensive boards on the market. And its VRM thermals and strong power efficiency also helped to show that it meant, well, business, especially when compared to the competition. So summing everything up, I guess the critical question remains. Is the ASRock Z890 Tai Chi Lite the right choice for your next build? Well, if you're an enthusiast or a creative professional seeking a high performance motherboard that delivers top tier features and raw power without that exorbitant cost, then yes, this board is an exceptional choice. In my opinion, it's well engineered, it's feature rich, and it stands shoulder to shoulder with its more expensive rivals. Though I know a lot of seasoned builders still aren't sold on ASRock boards, so especially after some of the bad press that they've had in the past. So yeah, I guess really it comes down to your personal choice, but if you are after features and a simple design without paying that top tier price, could be a winner. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this detailed look at the Z890 Tai Chi Lite from ASRock. If you did, a like and a subscribe to the channel would be great. And if you want to support everything that we do at eTechnics, you can join the super special Patreon club where you'll get really cool goodies, including behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.